where some of this stuff is at. So this was helpful for me in really understanding what happened and when. So um, obviously Olson started in 2003. That's not all that um, fascinating. But so what happened was Eric apparently was having conversations prior to September, but I don't have exact dates on those. So he tried to transfer his agency to Sandra. Now, what happened in that, that boardroom meeting? I don't know. I don't know exactly what was said, obviously, if he was saying, hey, I'm going to create a, a competing company. And so he was trying to move it to Sandra. And they said no, because they knew about his um, uh, anchor like strategy and they didn't want him to do that. Obviously, we don't know what happened in that conversation, but these are the facts of what actually happened. So September, he tries to move it over. WFG says, no, you can't do that. We don't really know what you're trying to do, so we're just not going to allow you to do it. On October 4th, Sandra resigns. WFG confirms that. On the th October 13th, GFI was formed in Wyoming. So literally right after she resigned, she starts forming the company. She starts getting it affiliated in other companies, California, Texas, and Florida. And then this is kind of when we saw Cofield's NDA was sometime in the end of October when he's having people sign NDAs as he's talking about another company. So I'm assuming, and this is just an assumption on my part, that Olson was probably around the same time doing NDAs with WFG agents talking about the new company as it's getting formed, right? This is when we're seeing um, those kinds of contracts coming out. And then here on the 28th of November is when Maricela Rivera does her meeting with Olson about GFI. So this is where uh, she's talking about signing the NDA, what uh, Olson is telling her about um, uh, Thali coming over, what he's saying about um, you know who's backing the company, all of that stuff that's happening. You can see Marcella's testimony. I put that as another video. You can go check that out if you want. And then on December 14th, they trademarked the name GFI. On the be, uh, beginning of January is when they really start raiding WFG agents. Now, I don't know if they were recruiting them pre previous to that. I'm assuming they were. Um, uh, but then uh, on January 2nd, Maricela has another call, and this is the day that she actually joins GFI. So I don't know if it wasn't open previous to that, if they were waiting for the name to be trademarked or whatever. But this is kind of the first evidence we have of a recruit over there. She signs the firewall. She joins GFI. And if you remember, the firewall is the CYA. Like, we didn't approach you. We weren't talking to you about trying to recruit you over. You came to us. Anything that we had talked about is private. You're not supposed to share it. Kind of a, a CYA. We didn't tell you to bring any of your agents over. We didn't tell you to bring any of your clients over. You're coming over kind of in your own free will, which was never really true, but it's supposed to help kind of protect GFI from any of the lawsuits in the future. January 3rd is when Nick Bosley meets with Olson, and you guys saw that testimony when he talked about what happened there. And sometime in this time frame, Olson was offered $20 million per year for his contract to stay on with WFG. So all of this is kind of happening simultaneously. And then we have the testimony from Yanira, and Yanira is the one that was told to download the client information and bring that over. This is where we have the question about churning. And so there's a uh, video on that as well. You can see the testimony for that one too. Next is on uh, January 10th, Eric prospects Rob Day. So they have a phone call. Uh, he has a phone call with Rob Day, says kind of the same exact things that he said to Yanira and to Bosley and to uh, the other lady and was basically saying, um, you know, WFG is kind of falling apart. Everybody's leaving. Dolly's coming over. We've got all this backing with the lawsuits. So you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So come on over and they're, they're working on recruiting. So on January 10th, Wealth runs a, a GFI presentation with over 250. We're assuming it's WFG agents, but it could have been other people on there as well. And then uh, Tavares Dove and Mimi Dove were apparently there as well. And uh, so I got some additional information about this. I, I don't know if anybody knows why Matthew Welsh was terminated. Please let me know. But apparently he was terminated previously. I don't know if that was in preparation of GFI or what happened there. But apparently Tavares, and this is just a rumor that I've heard. I don't know how accurate this is. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. But apparently he was terminated from WFG for cause. Something about a lady didn't have a beneficiary, and so allegedly he said, 
or said or either put himself as the beneficiary. So I believe that's why he got terminated from WFG. Again, that's kind of just hearsay. I don't have an actual paperwork that says any of that. So then Mimi basically took over uh, Tavares's uh, business from there. But they were both apparently on that call, and both of them had been formally, formally terminated from WFG. And I think this is important because this is kind of what happened. We saw a lot of this happening with uh, PHP or other companies. Somebody gets terminated from WFG, and then they go somewhere else and get started. And I'm not saying Patrick was terminated. I don't know what happened with that. But a lot of times we see agents get terminated from WFG and then go over to another company, and they're still able to use their stuff. So then on the 14th, uh, show rack meets with Chernowski, and so we have that testimony. It's not a full video, but that's kind of in the uh, testimony there as well. So WFG then sees all of this stuff is happening. Um, Tholly and McGinnis, and I think Rob Day run some kind of meeting on January 17th that's supposed to go against some of the things that GFI has been saying. So they hop on this meeting. They basically say, look, Dolly's not leaving. The stuff that they're saying is not true. And so um, Maricela, Bosley, Showrack, Day, they were all on that call. So now they're starting to get this understanding of, okay, here's what GFI is saying. WFG says one of the first things that they say and that these things are not true. So now these people are starting to find out that what GFI and, and Eric are saying is not true. So then on the 17th, Olson texts McGinnis saying, guess you made up your mind, right? Because he was on that call with Thali. And then on the 17th, GFI leaders bulletin, uh, so people are, were looking on social media, GFI posts this bulletin of former WFG agents from Welsh to Biona, Hart, Hidalgo, and Carter. All of the spouses are on the leaders bulletin at GFI while uh, their, their other spouse is still with GFI. So these guys were still with WFG, and then they're posting them being on the leaders bulletin at GFI simultaneously. So this is kind of where we're seeing the anchor leg strategy happening. One spouse is with WFG, the other spouse is with GFI. Okay, on the 18th, GFI and um, Olson and Cofield start doing damage control on social media. So they start saying, hey, go to these different platforms on Facebook and say some positive things about GFI. And, you know, um, uh, Cofield puts out some stuff like, oh, if you believe these old retired guys, then you deserve to make half as much money and that kind of stuff. We saw, we saw some of those texts about that. Then on the 20th, Eric threatens McGinnis on a text message, and not like a literal threat, but basically like, hey, if you tell anybody about what I've told to you, you'll be hearing from my lawyers. So um, he texts that over to McGinnis after apparently, because McGinnis wasn't responding back to these. So on the 17th, he says, guess you made up your mind after that uh, meeting with Tholly. And then, you know, if you speak out against me, you'll hear from my lawyers was a text message that we got to McGinnis. On the 22nd, Eric was terminated for cause. We read that together. There's another video on that if you want to see that. After he declined his, the $20 million. So I don't know exactly when he declined it, but apparently when he said no was when WFG terminated him. So I guess that's when they realized that was kind of the last-ditch effort that um, Eric was going to be doing his own thing. So on the uh, 23rd, Cofield hosts a WFG only recruiting video. So if you remember, we went through his um, his uh, text messages or um, on whatever it was, whatever app it was. And so he had WFG agents hop on there and basically he's recruiting them all over to GFI. Then on the 24th is when Carter and Chernowski get terminated and Cofield resigns and something about uh, Rochelle. So I think that they had the two of them. So Chermanowski was on one side and Rochelle was on the other. Something like that happened there as well. On the 25th was when Eric sues, uh, WFG sues Eric, then GFI sued WFG, and then Eric sues WFG on the 26th. On the 26th, Cofield then starts that signal group chat, right? So he's everybody who's recruiting over to GFI, he's moving them over to signal because that's not traceable. At the end of January, I don't have an exact date on this, Maricela resigns from GFI and goes back to WFG. 
So apparently they're letting people come back um, because part of what happened with Maricela was she was on that call with Thali. And so she realized that that was not true. And there were other things where they said that her team was going to be going over to GFI. Because if you remember, GFI, if the, uh, if the leader wouldn't go, GFI was coming under them, recruiting their team over, and then going back to the leader and saying, hey, if you don't come over, your whole team's coming. So you're going to basically lose your income. So Marcella got caught up in that, and they said that her team was coming over. She went over, the team didn't come over, so then she went back. So she was kind of finding out that some of those things were not accurate. February, the beginning of February, they started advertising that Break the Silence, uh, that flyer that was circulating around. Um, and I don't know if you know any of these guys, but more former agents, Matos, Bieza, Dorche, Dorche, King, Rios, and others were posting that video. So apparently they're taking that as a sign that they were probably with GFI. And then on February 4th was where all this kind of started for me and that I was hoping to uh, share this and see what exactly was going on. And um, he ended up canceling that. I, I don't think it was from the lawsuit because he didn't have the temporary restraining order, but the lawyers probably said, don't hop on and do that. So February 18th, this is when Cofield posted up that Instagram uh, photo where he was, or video where he was saying, well, you know, um, I didn't know that I didn't own my book of business and I did this for X number of years. And so what is your actual contract? That's when that video came out. And then February 24th was Cabo San Lucas. And Olson somewhere in that video was saying something about, I've never had ownership before, so I had to go and create it. So that kind of gets us caught up to date. And the reason why these are important is because it leads to WFG's thought process of these guys are defaming WFG even after their contract has ended. So they're still saying stuff that they never had ownership before. And right, this is a lot of what, if you remember, this is a lot of what I was hearing. You were probably hearing the same thing. You don't own your book of business. You never had ownership before. Um, and then that's kind of when some of the lies came out around Joanna about her not having ownership of her book of business, which we did a video on that, which was inaccurate as well. So that's kind of where we are up to date in the timeline of everything. Hope that's a little bit helpful in understanding